Hello everyone, welcome to William and the Magic Box. Today on our show, we are going to have an artist called Michael. Michael is from Texas in the USA. So let's see what Michael has to say. Enjoy the interview. Hello, Michael. Hey, how are you? I'm mean, very well. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty well. So how's your day been so far? Uh, pretty good. Well, I, I apologize again for having to reschedule this. We uh, had to go and do a church thing, but we're here now, so... It's okay. It's all right. By the way, I like the aquarium beh behind you. There's a beautiful fish there. <laughs> yeah, that's Tina. That's, there's three goldfish in there, but she's the eldest of them. She's huge, so... Hello, Tina. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Right, Michael. So before we start the game, just tell me where you're from. Uh, I am from Texas in the USA, so it's right. And yes, carry on. Sorry, I was just—it's a born and raised here, interesting place to live. Not you know, definitely more conservative and, than other places, but I I love it. So, and what's the name of your city? Uh, we live in Fort Worth, kind of. We live closer to Alito, but so if, if people that are familiar with the area will know. But Fort Worth is kind of DF. It's close to Dallas, about thirty uh -huh. minutes from Dallas. I see. I had a few guests from Dallas actually on the show already. <laughs> yeah. And uh, what's, the, what's the best part of leaving your city so far, in your opinion? Um, I don't know. The uh, well, it's I, comparatively, I like the people in other places of the country a little bit more. But the I don't know. The environment out here is nice. I like the we kind of live in a little it, what used to be a golf course, so it's kind of on the edge of the city. And so right behind us, we have like people with land that have horses and things like that. So it's kind of a close enough to the city, you can do things conveniently, but far enough out that it's nice and open and fills a little country. And I like that, so. I see. And uh, what do you do for leaving, Michael? Uh, well, I stay at home, mostly my husband's a pilot. And so he's gone a lot for four days at a time. And so we, and we have a lot of animals. And so I stay home with them. And so I also do a lot of art and things like that. So on the side, but mostly I'm a stay at home pet parent these days. <laughs> I see. So yes, I was checking your profile a little bit, and I could see that you are an artist as well. You have a, a few um, a few pieces of art, and uh, yeah. also I could see as well that your husband is a pilot. So I mean, he yeah. travels a lot. So you are the one who looks at the house, who looks after the the animals. Right. Yeah. That's all. That would be me. So it it definitely works out with a pilot schedule to have someone that's that's there because otherwise you know the mail is going to build up no one's going to be home to, to take care of things and so it's it's worked out well for us absolutely actually i had a pilot as well just one pilot in the show so far i could invite him as well maybe one day <laughs> <laughs> michael so just before we start our journey within the magic box how would you like to tell me something interesting about yourself Something interesting about myself. Um, I don't know. I'd like to think that I'm interesting, but I don't know. But <laughs> I guess I, you know, born and raised here. I went to, I originally went to school for acting. And so I have, you know, like I said, it was film acting too, so I have a little bit of experience there, but you know, I didn't really pursue it. And then I kind of, for a long time, thought about doing yoga and kind of got more spiritual on things. And then now I've kind of transitioned to art. And so I guess that kind of, I don't know, I'm sure there's lots of other people like that, but I, unique in a sense that I haven't really kind of a jack of all trades in different areas like I, I haven't really settled on anything and I don't know that I plan to and so but I en enjoy it so I don't uh, yes, know if it's interesting or not but there it is I'm sure you are I'm sure I think being an artist you, you have so many skills that you can do so many different things you know what I mean I think yeah. that's, that's part of being an artist and creative as well for sure right. Michael are you ready to go on a beautiful journey through your memories in life <laughs> your point of views I hope so, yeah. Amazing. So welcome to William and the Magic Box. So I have box full of wonderful questions okay so what i'm going to do now i'm just going to play a song just for us to move a little bit before the first question okay, okay. let's do it <laughs> great <laughs> so uh michael just before we start uh the, the the game through the questions through the game if there is a question that you don't want to answer for some reason you don't have an answer for I always can change okay it's all very friendly okay okay First question for you is, 
What made you laugh this week or this month? Uh, well, my animals are always making me laugh. They, uh, they, we just got a new bird and he's crazy and hopping around. You know, I don't know if you've ever seen little uh, on TikTok or whatever, the little birds hopping around on stuff. And I don't, there's something about that really tickles me. I don't know when, when they, you know, I don't know. They're just so cute and hopping. And that's the, that's the first thing on my mind when I think of what's made me laugh is how cute that little bird is. And so, but all oh. the animals in general are always being silly and making me, making me laugh. So. <laughs> they're, a good, so how many, they're a good time. How many animals do you have in your home? Uh, it used to be more. We have now we have so two dogs, Dotsons, and then uh, a land turtle and a water turtle, and then we have a frog tank and this fish tank and another fish tank at the kitchen. And I think that's it now. But there, <laughs> there used to be more. So, so and they change frequently because I've always been an animal addict, and so you know I'm always getting more or less, but. Amazing. I think you are so lucky to have animals around you. I think it's uh, it, it's uh, like a therapy to have those animals looking after Absolutely. us. Absolutely. Yeah. I think the energy in the house just brings so much joy and so much energy as well, for sure. Yeah. Very good. Lucky you. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Right. Next question for you is, what scares you the most about your future? What scares me the most? Uh, well, I'm going to answer, but that one's going to get a little deeper. So me at being in a gay relationship, me and my husband, you know, have no children. And so that scares me long, long term, because then I wonder, well, who do I, who do, who, does all this matter? Who do we pass it on to? What happens when everyone that's older than us is gone? And then, you know, I don't know, I guess I fear being alone. And so that's, that's a scary thing. But I think overall, we'll, We'll get over that, you know, and it'll work out in the end. But yeah, when I, you can get, easily get in your head about stuff like that. So, absolutely. I had a few gay guys on the show, and um, I understand some of them, they mentioned the same thing as well. Sometimes you find yourself in these, you lost your, lost in your thoughts, like, oh my God, the future is coming. You know what I mean? What's going to happen? We never know. There's, uh, we, some gay yeah. guys, they, they think about having children, but most of the gay guys, they don't. They don't. Uh, yeah. they have Well, we, we've certainly thought we've certainly thought about having children, but it's uh, it's a lot harder, especially being here in a very conservative place. And so most of the adoption places are run from from churches that are not accepting and things like it's, it'd be a lot of, of flaming hoops to jump through in order to do it. It can't just make the decision and have a child like most people can. So we've Absolutely. thought about it, but it's a lot. Yeah, absolutely. As well, I had other uh, gay couples as well on the show that they managed to to adopt children. And uh, my God, the process doing it it's a, it's yeah. hard and takes it's years. It's hard and expensive too. Yeah, it yeah, gets crazy. Ex absolutely, it's expensive. I was in Canada now. I just came back uh, this week from Canada, and I met a gay couple there that they are in the process of um, the process of doing it, and uh, they they need to buy a house. They change. They're gonna move their house as well because of that. So there's some. Yeah. Um, bureaucracy that you need to go through, like the, the pay, paperwork, they go through all your life in the past. It's a lot, it's a lot of to do. And oh, yeah. uh, but uh, anyway, I think um, when it meant to happen, you know what I mean? If people, some gay guys, they they are really into it. But I um, understand your point. Sometimes when you are, even you're in a couple, but uh, you just feel like, my God, what's going to be in the future? Who's yeah. going to look her after us? How are things going to go? Right. Anyway. Let's see, you never know. Sometimes life change in a way that you're not expecting. Sometimes, like, you know, it comes some good surprise as well. So let's hope. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Next question. Michael, as you said, before the next question, as you say about being gay, um, did you always have the support of your family? Tell me a little bit about your, um, your life being gay. Uh, well, as far as the support of the family, absolutely not. My... Uh... A lot, some of them have come around on my dad's side, they were a little more accepting. And then my mom, although we had, we had our issues early on and when I was still living at home, but after I moved out and married Sean, we've, we've got, we get along really well now and we have a great relationship, but her whole side of the family, I was raised very, very religious. Like both, both my grandfathers were Pentecostal preachers and we live here in Texas. And so coming out was not a thing. It wasn't an option. And so. I, I still never, I don't speak to that side of the family because they don't want to speak to me. And then, and now the grandfather on that side has passed away. So that was hard. I never really, oh. never got to make amends, you know, never got to 
So that was hard. And then they did, I was going to go to the funeral, but some people made a scene about that. And so it's been, it's been messy. You know, it hasn't always been easy, but it is what it is. And you kind of, as a gay person, you get to choose the people in your life and, and your family. And then, so I have my dad's side as, as crazy as they are, they've always been accepting. And then Sean's side of the family is great. And so I've gotten to be a part of their family and get to have that. And so everything's worked out well, but no, absolutely not. They were not supportive when I came out, no. And then um, when you came out, um, there was like, uh, you just felt like, okay, there's the, did something happen that you felt like, okay, that's the time now, I'm gonna come out now, or just naturally you felt like, okay, I'm just gonna be well, myself? Well, I know I, they found out actually, but I, I start, I had a boyfriend during high school earlier on, and so, and I guess, I guess all mothers can be a little bit snoopy, you know, like a little bit, and yeah. so she found notes because this is back before cell phones and things, you know, I'm going to date myself. So you pass paper notes that any kids watching this are going to have no clue what I'm talking about. But, and so she found some of those and was like, what, who's this? What are you talking about? Boyfriends, this and that. So she kind of called me out on it. And then of course had to call in the, the pastor family and all this stuff. And so it just kind of spiraled from there. And so I was kind of, I was outed, you know, by them, not really. And I wanted to come out and I knew that I was gay, but I just didn't know how. And so I don't know what would have happened otherwise. I'm, in a way, it's a relief because I didn't have to have, sit them down and say, hey, by the way, you know, they, they found out on their own and they called me out. And so in a way, it was a blessing, I guess. Yeah, I think all of us, all of us, we go through uh, uh, the situation, you know what I mean? It doesn't matter sometimes if your parents, they're supportive or not. So at one point, it's going to come up. At one point, you need to talk, you don't talk. Right. One point, things is going to be clear, it needs to be clear. So, yeah. Right, next question for you is, what's the best advice you've ever given? The best advice I've ever been given? Um, Are you given someone? I don't know. I... I've had a lot of people throughout my life just, I, don't, I can't think of the, you know, any one specific person, but all the people that have, that have told me to just be myself and to not, because eventually, you know, you can listen to all these people and you can do what they want you to do or take their advice on, like, on religion or your own personal life or whatever, but eventually you just have to, you're going to reach an age where you realize that it's your decision. Like, you have to make up your own choices and your own beliefs and your own ideas and faith and And I think that's that's great advice to just to really doesn't matter to follow your own path, you know, not to listen to what anybody else has to say. And at the end, of, I don't know what, what what words I'm allowed to say. So I'll say screw them instead of the words I want to. But at certain, you got to say screw somebody because like it's not your life, it's not your decision, you know. And I think that's great advice for for any, especially young people growing up to to follow their own heart and their own path. Amazing. Next question. Let's do it. Hey, Michael from Texas. Next question for you is, what is the best gift have you ever received and from whom? Uh, well, I don't know if it's the absolute best, but it's first thing that popped in mind, so I'm going to say it. Last year, the uh, my oldest dog had already passed away recently, but my, my mother-in-law gave me a my, my newest, my puppy. He's still, he's about a year old now, so he's still a puppy, I guess, but my, a, a new dog, a Dotson, and He's just the sweetest, cutest little thing I've ever seen. So that was that was a pretty great gift. That was very and very sweet and came at such a night, nice, you know, at the time where I was feeling lost about my previous dog. And so it really filled a hole, you know, in my heart. And so it was oh. a great gift. Is he around or not? He's far away? Uh, no, because he's crazy. And so I thought about maybe leaving him in here, but then I figured he'd be knocking over the camera and knocking stuff <laughs> and barking. And so I was like, no, nah, no. So he's on the other side of the house with my husband. They kind of quarantined everybody in there. and. So it would be nice and quiet and we can actually do this without, you know, without there being chaos. Oh, sweet. Very sweet. Next question. Hey, Michael. So tell me a little bit about your art. Now, how did your art came um, came to your life? How did it happen, your, um, your, your passion about being an artist? Uh, well, I guess the physical like you know painting and drawing that is more of a recent development i've always enjoyed drawing and i i've tried doing things on like actual paint canvases and i i've been bad at it I'll, you know i enjoy doing it but it's been bad and it's messy and it's expensive and so but when i realized now everything you know you can do these things digitally and so i started doing my hand at that and i, I found a lot better luck with that and i've been getting i think better and better i would like to hope getting better and better and so 
it just kind of took off recently within the past year or so I started, you know, asking people to model and things like that. And so it just, and it's gotten, I, I've been really enjoying it and the other people seem to enjoy it. And so I think, I don't know, but I mean, I've always been an artistic person. I grew up doing theater and all these other things. And so, but the actual painting side of it is a very recent development, I think. Yes, I had a look a little bit in your in your art and I really liked it. I was like, wow, that's amazing. You can see uh, the passion for your your painting. I really enjoyed it. I, really, I was looking at it a little bit before and I was like, wow, that's amazing. Well done. Well, thank you. Next question for you is, what do you consider most romantic? What do I consider most romantic? Uh, I guess we've been, me and my husband have been together for 14 years now. We are married for 14 years, together for 15. And wow. so, I think it's romantic that I think a lot of people give up real easily. You know, I'll see a lot of couples get together and then break up and this, that, and the other. And their reasoning for separating, sometimes, sometimes it's very valid, obviously, but sometimes it's not so much. And so I think it's romantic that we have no thought of ever leaving each other. There's like nothing really that would break us up. I think our bond is, is truly thick or thin, you know, we are good or bad, you know, sickness and health, I guess, is what you, but. I think that's it's nice and it's romantic that we have a, a relationship that you don't really have to worry about. Even after 14 years, we're very comfortable and very satisfied in in our relationship. And uh, how did you guys meet up? If you can share, how did we guys meet? Yeah, how did you uh, meet we, up? Uh, it was at a club in Dallas, actually, which is it sounds you know it doesn't say, it doesn't scream forever. You know, when you think of meeting someone in a club, it doesn't. It's, you know, it, it, at, for its time, it was like meeting someone on a dating app. It's not something you're probably not gonna last, but but it did, and here we are. And so, yeah, that's how we met in a club. So, <laughs> <laughs> very good. Next question. Michael, next question for you is: What did you think was the most challenging part of being a kid? Um. Well, at the time, I don't know. I guess it depends on what you mean by kid. If it, teenage years, obviously, the hardest part was hiding my sexuality and growing and things like that. But as a little kid, I used to get really mad because I don't know if I'm a, if people say I'm an old soul or something, but I used to get mad when they when parents would tell you to do something and wouldn't give you a reason why. You know, it's because I said so, because of this. And I, I was still like are these overlords, you know, telling me everything to do. And I was like, no, that doesn't make any sense. I, why would I? Why? You know, like. And I was never a bad kid. I was always a really well-behaved kid. So when then they looked at me and said, because I said so, it's like, that's unacceptable, you know? And now as an adult, I can see why they did that. But that was hard for me. I didn't, I wasn't willing to accept because I said so, you know, I just tell me, I want to know why, like treat me like an adult, like a person, you know? And uh, do you have siblings as well? Uh, yeah, I have, uh, growing up, I really only interacted with my, my older brother. He's about two years older than me. And then I have uh, several step, step and half siblings, so. Be good. Are you enjoying the show so far? Yeah. Good. Next question. Before the next question, tell me um, about Texas. Uh, what what Texas has? The, for example, I've never been to Texas before in the, the state of Texas. If I would come for the very first time, if you could guide me, like, okay, you need to go to this place, to that place, to this city. What would be your suggest for me? Well, it's kind of a, it's kind of a cultural melting pot, to be honest. Have people from all over, it used to not be, but people from all over come to Texas for the for the real estate, for this reason, for whatever reason. And so depending on the city, you have a very different vibe. Like ours is a slightly, Fort Worth is slightly more conservative. Dallas is a lot more liberal. And then you've got like the capital in Austin. That's like, it's a completely different story. Houston, I don't know. That's, I guess it depends on what you're into and what it's. Sean and I are vegetarian, so that doesn't matter. But if you're not, if you eat meat, then I'm sure Texas barbecue is great. Texas Mexican food, now that's delicious. Like, you're gonna like, <laughs> still find really good stuff there. But I don't know. Yeah, the food's great. And um, I think the, I, the good thing about Texas is that it's very diverse like that. There's a lot of whoever you are, whatever you believe, whatever you're into, there's a lot of other people like you. It's a huge, huge state with a lot of people. And so you can find whatever. It's, it's very diverse like that. Very good. Next question for you is, right, what is the best first date have we ever been on? Hmm, best first date. The best you know, to be honest, it's been, it's been so long. So I, when me and Sean got together, I was still in high school. I was 18 and then by the time I got married, I was just barely 19. And wow. so 
Yeah. So date, you know, dating back then was like, you know, hanging out after school or something. And so, and then, you know, by that time me and Sean really started dating, we had met up a lot, but was it a date? I don't know. And so that's a weird question, I guess, for me at least, because I don't, I don't really recall a lot of like first dates. You know, I, I saw a lot of people, we hung out a lot and then me and Sean got together, but I don't know if it was like an official going out date thing. I don't know. <laughs> I think you've been dating for the years, I think. Get to know each other. Right. right. <laughs> and so far, uh, for these 15 years that you've known him, um, what is the most beautiful lesson have you learned from him so far? Uh, well, we I think we both learned, I don't know if there's anything super specific, but I, I think we both learned a lot about, we kind of complete each other in a way. I'm we're very opposites. And so, especially with like money, if it were up to me, I'd spend all the money. If it were up to him, he'd spend none of it. And so, and, and it's almost like that way in every aspect of our lives. And so it's kind of taught us both like a beautiful balance in life in general to kind of learn how to, it's okay to be that way too. And maybe somewhere in the middle of best, you know, and we kind of have learned from each other in that way to kind of balance each other out. I think to be honest to you, Michael, I feel so happy to, and uh, to see a gay, a gay couple who met so young, you're 18, 19, and you met and you're still together so long, you know what I mean? You kind of... Yeah, no well, I, hear, I get that a lot. A lot, yeah. a lot of people break up, and especially in the gay community, there's, that's, you know, 15 years in the gay community, that's like at least 30 years. I mean, that's, <laughs> it, it is. I mean, I get that all the time, especially from other gay men. They're like, wow, you know, been together 15 years, married for 14, that's, that's a lot, that's a long time. It's beautiful. I think it's beautiful because, as, as I said, as I mentioned, because you guys were very young, you didn't know you didn't know a lot about the gay scene. And as you know, the gay scene right. can be, you know what I mean, very open people, and they still together, like like beautiful. And I can see the way you yeah. talk about him, how how beautiful, how much you love him, and how much you appreciate yeah. the relationship between both of you. I think it, it's yeah. nice to to, to well, connect at that point. At that point in your life, meeting that young, you don't you really even know who you're who you are and I think that's why a lot of adults will discourage like oh you guys won't make it or this or the other because it's, it's true you don't even know who you are when you're 18 or 19 like you haven't Absolutely. developed your full personality you don't know where you're who you're going to be or where you're going to want to be or what you're going to want to do in 20 years or 14 years or whatever and so I think it's just important for us to important and yes beautiful and special that we have made it and somehow developed together and became yes we've become different people but we've always done it in the framework of our relationship absolutely i think relationship is a maintenance daily every day it's not easy absolutely oh yes I mean, absolutely it's, 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 uh, it's about the understanding it's about being it's com uh, have the communication all the time it's about loving it's about understanding it's about fighting it's about everything i think everything in a packet but it's not easy but when people they are willing to do it to go for it to face it and to leave it I think that's why why the the magic happened. You know what I mean? That's what right. I mean. Absolutely. Next question. Let's do it. <laughs> okay, Michael. Next question for you is: If you won the lottery, what would be your first big splurge? First big splurge. Um. Well, we'd probably we'd pay off some things, pay off some student debt. First of all, that would be a big splurge, <laughs> and then. Uh, even though we, as much as we love this house and we love the area and everything, I always wanted to buy somewhere with a little bit more land because right now we're in an HOA and we're not allowed to have like, I get back to the animals. I want chickens and a couple goats and like, you know, some like a little farm of my own. And so it would be nice to, to live somewhere that, you know, with slightly more land and things like that. So probably like, like a house or something. Good. Next question. Next question for you is, um, what do you like the most about your best friends? Um, I'm gonna, well, I have two best friends. And I think what I like most about them, we've, first of all, we've been best friends since freshman year of high school. We've known each other a very long time. And one of them even, I've known since I was 11. So long, long time, but they, they're, they're crazy. And I think that's what I love about them. They pulled me out of my own comfort zone. And at the time I was like that now, but now I've gotten older. And they're still just as crazy as they were when we were 11 year old kids. And I love that about them because it makes me feel childish and it makes me feel ridiculous and silly. And you always get a great laugh out of them. And sometimes it's crazy and frustrating. And sometimes, but at the same time, I'm like, but I love you for it. You know, like even when I'm like, think you're being ridiculous and have made a terrible decision, I love it because you're, you make me laugh. You know, they're, they're very silly people. 
Absolutely. I think best friends, you, do, you don't choose best friends. They come naturally. It's like a relationship. Yes. When the chemistry is there, there's no other way. You don't go around right. and say, oh, you're going to be my best friend. You're gonna be, it doesn't work like that. It's the, when the chemistry is that's how it happens. It's like a relationship. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. yeah. Ready for another one? Sure. Let's do it. Next question, Michael. Um, if you could go back in time, in one moment or memory in your life, what that would be and why? Um, trying to think. It might be, honestly, I'd like to go back. If I could not relive it myself, but like as a fly on the wall, I would kind of like to go back and see mine and Sean's meeting, just because you think you see things in a certain way. When you are at least in your memory and every time you remember it it becomes a little less accurate and so it'd be nice to see if, like from a fresh perspective and like you'd see us like kind of glancing from across the room and things like that and just see how it, how it actually played out in reality you know because you have an idea in your head of how it happened but you don't really know and so especially when it was that long ago so it would be nice to go back and just see that like as if watching a movie and just you know sit back and enjoy it that'd be fun very good. I think we live in a different world right now, don't we? It's a different world as we were trying. Oh, <laughs> yes, absolutely. And yeah, yeah. Some, you know, some ways socially and th I mean, in some ways there are, there are great things about our modern times, but in a lot of ways there really aren't. And so I don't know. I don't know if we're getting if we're getting better or about to end. Who knows? It was just the world we live in. You just kind of roll the dice every day. So. Yeah, I think the world right now, like being modern and be so fast with the modernity, I think it's, it, of course, it's a plus, you know what I mean? It, it helps a lot. But at the same time as well, I feel so lucky that to grow up in the 80s where there was no more, like cell, cell phones, yes. there was internet, you know what I mean? You, for you to meet friends. Yes, that was, that was me. And I, I grew up in the 90s. I was born in 88, but I grew up in the 90s. And so, but the, still, yeah. that had no, there was no cell phones. Oh. There was, towards the end, there was internet, but barely. It was like Google and it didn't even work very well. And like, and so when I was a teenager, we started getting stuff like, you know, even then it was like AIM and Yahoo Messenger and things like that. And so, and even that was great. But I'm so glad there were no cell phones to take pictures. I was so glad that we lived in an age where you actually went outside and played with your friends in the mud or something. You know, it was just a different time. And the 90s was fun because there were so many, it was kind of the big, like, the beginning of the really cool toys, in my opinion, like Furbies and things like that, like these really neat things and that other kids didn't get to play with and that we did, but yet it was still before it got too modern. So Absolutely. it was like a beautiful golden time to be a child, I think. Absolutely. I think we were very lucky. We were very lucky. Yeah, sure. absolutely. Next one. Before the next one, tell me um, what is the best part of being married to a pilot and what is the most challenging part? Because I know, you know, being a pilot, I'm sure, he, as you said, he travels a lot, he's always away. So for you, what's the, how do you take that in a positive and negative way? Uh, well, I guess I think they're both related to the same thing that him being gone a lot can be challenging, especially if he's going to be gone for four, maybe five days at a time, usually only four and sometimes only three. But still, there's like it's an adjustment and everybody gets into their groove. And so when you're when there is no routine, when you never know how long he's going to be gone or this and it changes every month. And so it's hard to it's hard being away from each other and it's hard to gather a real routine but then at the same time i cherish my so my alone time you know now i can do watch whatever i want read whatever i want do whatever you know it's a nice it's a break you know and then maybe that plays a part to how how long we've been together too because we actually get that time to miss each other and get that time to take time for ourselves and i think that's that's been great so it's challenging and a blessing in the same thing so you said something very interesting that um, you you have time for yourselves. I think you take this time for yourselves, yeah. and and after those three four days, you, you miss each other so much that you just want to get together again. I think it's a plus for you guys. To, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, to have this life. You have to miss each other, and you and yeah, and you get you get to do what you want at the same time. So you have your personal time. Cause a lot of married people are just together all the time, and you yeah. start fighting, you start bickering, and suddenly things that you used to think were cute now you find it super annoying because they're just there all the time. And so it is nice to have that that break every once in a while. Absolutely. Next question for you is, if you're not yourself, would you like to be yourself and why? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think that I like who I am. I think I've turned out pretty great and pretty level-headed. And even the, the negative things like, you know, having to come out to a family that wasn't accepting and things like that. 
they've all contributed to the person I am today. And I like the person I am today, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it. If I could go back in time and, you know, a lot of people talk about cherry picking events to try to alter them in some way and maybe take, but I, I wouldn't do that. I think that everything has happened for a reason and it's maybe the per the man I am today. I don't like it, so. Perfect. That's what that's what it's about. I think because you are happy with yourself, you, even though about your you know what I mean, your negativity, your positivity. But even though you like to be yourself, I think you are just helped with your skin, with yourself at the moment. So that's uh, what the question is about. Very good. Yeah, absolutely. Three questions left for you. Let's do okay. it. You're very easy answering questions. <laughs> oh, I'll try. I'll try. <laughs> Next question for you is, which bad habits you wish you could stop? Uh, well, where do I begin on that? I have lots of bad habits, but um, I think self-doubt would be a big one. I think I may have inherited that, like insecurities and things from my mom, not to talk badly about her or anything, but she does have a lot of insecurities. And I think, I didn't notice that till recently, but I think that's bled into me and it's in a lot of different areas, you know, I, even with the art or when I, back when I was doing acting or even a relationship or just friendships or even doing this interview, I like, I get in my head and think, well, I'm, I'm going to screw this up. Like this, is, or somebody's not going to enjoy it or this is bad in some way. And so I just, I really beat myself. I'm really, really hard on myself and I wish I could not be. And how do you, um, how do you work on it? What's, what do you do to make yourself more confident about that? There's some, a mechanism that you find, what, how do you do? A lot of it is just just doing it, you know, just get over yourself and just do it because that's what I had to do back in high school and early college when I was doing theater and things. You, I, you know, I'm super, super nervous before going out there, but I know I know my lines. I prepare for everything. And so and then but once the curtain opens, once you're out there and doing it, it's fine. Everything's fine. And, and most of the time you'll get, you know, praise or someone like you saying you appreciate my art and you can see the passion that, that's helpful. And so it's I think that's. I don't know if, if that's called coping, but I, I just do it anyways. It doesn't matter how nervous or scared you are, just do it. And then most of the time it'll work out. And if it doesn't, just try it again or try something else. It's, it's simpler than people make it, I think. You just got to get out there and do it. Absolutely. I read I read once saying that uh, um, if you want to do something, if you have the opportunity, even if you feel scared, go feeling scared and do it. Because sometimes yeah. you're gonna, you can see beautiful things out there. You know what I mean? Yeah, so I think absolutely. Even if you feel scared, go feeling scared. <laughs> yeah, no. absolutely. And I think it's good to be scared. It's good to be scared. It's healthy to be scared. You shouldn't, yeah. if you feel confident about everything and there's something wrong with you, like life is scary, you know, like absolutely. you should be a little nervous and prepare, you know, but, but do it anyway. It's awesome. It makes life better and you'll be glad you did. Even if you fail, you'll be glad that you tried. Absolutely. Absolutely. Two questions left. Let's do it. Michael from Texas, next question for you is, what is the most beautiful thing someone has ever done for you? Most beautiful thing that someone's ever done for me? Um, I guess, you know, I'm gonna go back because, so being really raised, I'm gonna, that's gonna be my mother eventually accepting me. So I like to begin at the end of my stories and when I talk, I get kind of messed up, but my mom, was raised way more religiously than I. She lived with my grandpa, the one I never spoke to again. And so in her mind, it was, she was, you know, trying to save my soul or something whenever she wasn't accepting me and being, and I have really horrible memories and like of conversations that we had together. But now we have a beautiful relationship. We talk, you know, two or three times a week. We see, we come in, get, to see, get together and see each other and eat. And I think her being able to overcome, because, you know, religious programming, if you will, is extremely hard to come over i still struggle with that and so for her to say i love you anyways and we're gonna we're gonna work past this and and to even accept sean and buys him she calls him son-in-law and buys him presents for his christmas and birthday and accepts him and that's, that's beautiful that's a, that's a great gift to have and you know maybe deep down she doesn't necessarily approve or believe the same way but it doesn't matter like because i'm her son and now by extension sean is her son you know so I think that's, that's a beautiful gift, I guess. I never really thought of it that way until just now, but 
Yeah. Oh, no, it's beautiful. I think it's beautiful. And sometimes as well, like what makes me feel like very happy what you're saying is sometimes our parents, for example, I remember being a child, I remember praying on the in the church that they didn't want to be this way, they don't want to think this way, like what's wrong, you know what I mean? When you don't have information, when religion can have a big impact on you. I think religion can be important as well, but it can be very dangerous, you know what I mean? Yeah, well. Because my, my, my parents, they were very... They were very, my mom had never been very religious. They were going to church. And actually, I was going to church because I wanted to. I remember being a child. My mom thought that I would be a priest because I was in the church every weekend. And I loved it. For me, it was like, wow, yeah. I love it there. But uh, I remember praying sometimes, like, oh my God, I don't want to be this way. I didn't want to, you know what I mean, feel this way because they didn't have information. They didn't know anything. But you said something very interesting because sometimes it's not even our parents' fault because it's the way the society, you know what I mean, taught them, right. taught is the way that the religion taught them. And sometimes we need to be understanding that sometimes <clears throat> we need to educate them as well. They need to under, put ourselves in their shoes because it right. just, they, they don't understand sometimes. I know right. In their mind, they're doing the right thing. They think, yeah. you know, it's my responsibility to keep them from going to hell or whatever they believe. And so, okay. I, and it took me a long time to get to that point, but I, I finally started realizing that this, if it were my child and they were doing something that I believed in my heart was was wrong or was going to get them in trouble with God, then of course I would say something too, you know? So I it, it took a while to get there. And I think it was a struggle on both sides for me to accept her and her to accept me. Yeah. And thank God we finally did, because a lot of people don't, you know? A lot of families never really get to reconnect, so. Absolutely, that's the best part. I think that's the most beautiful part, that you both understood each other and try to, you know what I mean, to fix it or at least to to build a different life that you didn't have in the past. Yeah. You know, the, what the right. Most to say that we, we don't necessarily believe the same way and that's okay. You know, that's so and that's a lot of people never get to the point of it being okay. And Absolutely. so, in the end of the day, she was, she was just trying to protect you anyway, in the end of the day. Right, you know? exactly. Yeah. She was that's just the, trying in her way to be a good mother. Absolutely. And so. Absolutely. And she didn't have the information before. She wasn't ready for it. So, so that's uh, right. some good for us as well to understand that sometimes when people they don't accept us or they don't understand it's just we just we need to understand that that's the way the, the society the religion whatever taught them the, you know what i mean so sometimes you just need to be more understanding as well not crash you know what i mean it's not easy to understand right. but you need to be more understanding as well it's up to absolutely. us to educate them to educate them and be approachable for sure yeah absolutely last question let's do okay. it okay <laughs> Last question for you is Who are you most thankful for and why? Uh, well, not to sound like a broken record, but it's going to have to be Sean. I got to be most thankful for him because he is. I don't know where I'd be without him. I don't know what, what, a do what I would have done my, if my life would have gone the same way, if I would be in the very blessed position that I am now. He has been. I think he's always been the level the level headed side of the relationship. I was I was more like my friends before, a little crazy, a little out there, and so, and you know, as like an artist and things, I wouldn't be able to stay home and paint and take care of animals and do yoga and do all these things that I love doing if it wasn't for him providing for me in that way. And so, yeah, I don't know. He's just he's a blessing in every way imaginable. He's I don't know how I would have worked out without him. So definitely, the most thankful for him. And for sure, he'll be very happy to know that for the interview when he watches it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. I'll have to um, leave the room. I'm like, all right, don't get too mushy, you know. Like, just, <laughs> just accept it. Don't get, don't let it go to your head, you know. You're gonna be flying now more than ever. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's not the end yet. Okay. Let's play now the word association game. So I'm going to give away some okay. words, and you just tell me one word that comes to your mind. Quick thinking. Okay. Let's okay. start with money. Uh, success. Family. Um, I'm going to say friendship because that's my friends are my family. Okay. How about love? Um, I don't know. Relationships. I don't know. I'm just, I guess, first word. No, just, just go ahead. Okay. Sex. Uh, fun. <laughs> <laughs> How about life? Um, Life is good. I don't know. It's good. Okay. Politics. Uh, dangerous. Scary. Re <laughs> Religion. Um, it's positive things. So faith, I guess. Like, not always, but for me, it means faith. 
Amazing. Uh, one word for friendship. Another word for friendship. I'm going to have to go back and say family. So. Desire. Um, I don't know if it's appropriate. I'm going to say lust. Okay. You know? Regret. Regret. Uh, don't. I don't know. Don't do it. Very good. One word for success. One word for success. Um, power, achievement. I don't know. One word for wish. Like a okay. prayer. Prayer. There okay. Cool. One word for happiness. Um, I'm going to say marriage because my marriage is happy. So. Very good. One word for Texas. For Texas. Uh, howdy. <laughs> I got to say howdy. Might not be what? my word, but that's a common word in Texas. So. <laughs> One word for arts. For arts of beauty. Okay, and the last one now, USA, one word. Um, I don't want to be labeled as anti-USA, but I'm going to say embarrassing sometimes because we, we're embarrassing sometimes. <laughs> you know, I like to, we are, you know, I love democracy. I love everything. There's a lot of great things, but because of that, because of all the different viewpoints, we can be really embarrassing sometimes. I mean, and the things that I know, I know I've watched other people's news and stuff and I hear them reporting on the USA. I'm like, oh, you guys, like, this is, it doesn't look good, you know? <laughs> Very funny. Right, let's, um, let's pretend now I'm going to meet your lovely husband uh, for a coffee and I'm going to ask him, tell me the most beautiful thing about Michael and tell me something that he still needs to improve on, to work on. What do you think he'll tell me? Uh, well, he would, he would probably say that my, my, like the things he lacked, like my spontaneity and the artistic side, and he would probably say that I need to work on, uh, less procrastination, more responsibility, things like that. Cause I do like to, like to slack on certain things, you know, I might be doing great artwork, but did I, did I sweep the floor? Did I do that? Did I do the dishes or are they piled up mile high? You know, things like, you know, take a little bit more life responsibility. But the good side was obviously the artistic side that he lacks, so. Very good, very good. Let's play now Michael in the magic box and you can ask me a question. Okay, Michael, you can ask me a question now. Okay, well, I've already played this before and now you've already kind of asked me a similar question. But if so, I, if I were coming to the UK or and what, like, where would you recommend I go and what would I do? And not like a touristy thing, because there's, there's the obvious things, you know, but where should I go to really get a good experience that's not necessarily typical of a tourist? Absolutely. Um, good question, actually. I think the, I think the, um, have you been in London before, the UK? No, never. No? Right, so let's say I'm going to be your your, uh, your guide tourist for one day. So I will take okay. you for like, I will take you first um, to the main, you know what I mean, the main sites in like Big Ben, yeah. uh, Anga Palace, London Eye, um, a, a few places like in London that everyone goes, Tower Bridge, uh, the Tower of London, I would go for those places. And after that, I would take you to Canada Wharf. Canada Wharf is an area, it's a very modern area that people, when they come to London, they don't expect that. Um, it's a very modern high buildings, but it's so beautiful there because there are a lot of like uh, green space as well, a lot of, uh, um, you feel like New York, some, but it's like in a, in a small proportion, there's a river as well. There's some, um, some by the canal, you can see a lot of beautiful things there. Also, I'll take you to Candentau. Candentau is a very, um, it's a very um, how can I say, not with those people, it's very trendy. People, they like tattoos, people, they like piercings. Those people, is like freedom, it's a, it's a, it's a kind of it's very famous. When Amy Winehouse, I don't know the singer, she was living there, the Amy Winehouse, the one who, who died of, yeah, um, yeah. As, was living around there. So it's very trendy, it's very, it's, if you feel freedom there, people, they can be themselves, people to just express themselves, tattoos with you know, this, uh, trendy way of uh, of uh, dressing up or feeling. Also, I'll take you as well to um, South London. Actually, I live in South London is um, there's an area called Clapham. Clapham is very um, is full of restaurants as well. It's full of it's like the gay scene there. It's very popular as well. It's kind of local gay scene, it's not for tourists. Um, I'll take you to Soho as well. Soho is a very is a gay place in London, uh, but it's a lot of tourists uh, over there. It's very central. I'll take you there just to see the vibe of um, of uh, yeah. So the gay scene, but also take different parts of London as well um, to see uh, Nagay in a different way. 
So yeah, I think London is a very multicultural city. You find people from around the globe here. There are so many places to visit in London. So even though I've been here for 17 years, I always go to some place that I've never been before. So it's always, it's always find a place in London that is hidden somehow. So um, so yeah, so I'll, I'll guide you. But the first day, I'll take you to the very main uh, uh, um, yeah. attractions just for you to be okay. I've been in London, you know what I mean? But after yeah. that, Take you for some local places just for you to see the different vibe to to see the English style um, in London for sure. And uh, saying that, you are welcome to come to London one day when your <laughs> your husband's flying somehow or you guys planning to come one day. Please let me know and I'll be yeah. more happy to spend some times with you here and just to show you around. <laughs> For you to be welcome in London. Well, that was that was a much better answer than what I gave. So clearly, you know, that was very de that was very detailed. Good job. That was good. Michael, did you have a good time? Did you enjoy the interview? I did. Yeah, I was more. It was flu. Was a little easier than I thought it was going to be. I was a little nervous. So I like to have Tina as well in the background. I think she gave you some support. <laughs> yeah, she did. Yeah, she's definitely helping me out, giving me a little confidence boost back there. <laughs> I could see her like uh, fish, uh, like um, like just um, yeah. around. So, okay, he's doing well. He's doing well. He just <laughs> checking in on me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, it was a pleasure. Thanks so much for taking the time. Thanks for for challenging yourself and to do um, the interview. I really appreciate your time to be part of the show. But before you go, I would like you to share a positive message, a positive quote, something that inspires in life. Yes. Uh, so I'm gonna look because I wrote it down so I wouldn't misquote. But from our Uh, our beautiful former first lady, Michelle Obama, she once said, don't ever make decisions based on fear, make decisions based on hope and possibility, make decisions on what should happen instead of what shouldn't happen. And I think that's beautiful. I think that's very well said of her. And so I try to live my life in that way all the time. Like even coming on here, like I could have said no because I was afraid or I could be like, well, what if, what if there's a good thing out of this? So I decided to come on out of the hope and possibility. And so I try to live I think it's a beautiful quote and I try to live my life according to it. And I'm glad you did. I'm glad you did because it was a pleasure connecting with you. I can see how much you are very transparent. I can see that's how much you, you know what I mean, you enjoy life, you know, be around animals as well. I think people who who love animals, I think they, they, it says a lot about them when they have the animals around. I think it's... Uh, oh, yeah. it, thank it's you, it. I try. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, thank you so much. All the regards for your husband and keep in touch, okay? And uh, thanks for the interview. And one day, if you come in London, please, the, the, the door open, a wide open. I'll be here ready for, for to go for a for a walk and to show you around, okay? Thank you very All much. Right. Thank, thank you. Take care. Bye bye. Bye. So, did you like the show? Don't forget to give a like, share it, and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to be part of the show as well, First, subscribe to our channel, and after that, just go to our website www.williamandthemagicbox.com and send us a request saying why would you like to be part of the show. And I see you there. Bye-bye, see you next time.